Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll ex further explore the notion of the efficient frontier and we'll see how we can obtain uh, a risk return profile that is not provided by the efficient frontier stock. Just to recap briefly, um, you have this efficient frontier of portfolio of stocks. The stocks in this portfolio are AT&T and Best Buy. These are their average returns um, and these are their average variances, their standard deviations and their covariance. Given this information, if you combine AT&T and Best Buy in various combinations, you get various combined average returns and you get combined variances and their standard deviations. And if you plot that, you get a curve such as this, which is the efficient frontier curve. If you take, for example, 6.8% return, which is this point here. So it represents this particular line. It represents 90% of AT&T and 10% of Best Buy. And the whole notion of efficient frontier is that if you're willing to tolerate 3.25% uh, or thereabouts of risk, then for the same risk, you can get a higher return um, here's so you get a 10% return instead of a 6.8% return if you combine AT&T and Best Buy in a different proportion which is this point somewhere here so that's the notion of the efficient frontier so given that what we want to now explore is what if we want to take a risk that's no greater than say 2% now, there is no stock combination on the efficient frontier that will give us a 2% risk profile or anything lower than, say, whatever this figure is, which is around 2.3 or 2.4. So what we can then do is we can combine an efficient portfolio of stocks with a risk-free uh, security such as a bank deposit. So you can buy some AT&T, you can buy some Best Buy, and you can buy, you can put uh, the remaining money in a bank deposit. So that would be a portfolio of stocks and a risk-free investment that will together give you a lesser risk than the one, than any of the risk uh, profiles denoted by the efficient frontier. So how do you do that? Let me just represent this risk-free return on this graph here. So what I want to do is I want to include this data, add, series name risk free return and then the x value is zero and the y value is um, um, this one here okay 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 all right so now you have this uh, red square dot here that represents the risk free rate of five percent and so you can say you can see that it has zero risk and it has a five percent return now, if you combine this with one of the points on this efficient frontier, you can get a return that's less than the lowest return represented by your efficient frontier. So let me just draw a line to kind of show you that. Uh, supposing you draw a line from here to here. So that represents uh, some combination of um, stocks on this point on the efficient frontier and this risk-free return. So if you took um, let's see what that point is. 8.4% represents 70% of AT&T, 30% of Best Buy. So let's say you invest in this portfolio. Let's say you invest 50% of your money in this portfolio. Let's say $50, okay? So then you'd have 70% of that, which is um, $35 in AT&T. You'd have 30% of that, $15 in Best Buy. And the remaining $50 you'd have in cash. If you did that, your return would be somewhere right in between because you've equally invested in both your risk-free investment and your stock portfolio. Now, if you invest more in your stock portfolio and less in your risk-free return, then obviously your return point is going to move somewhere closer to this point. And if you invest more in your risk-free return, it's going to move towards this point. So, so this line basically represents all possible values of your risk and return. If you invest in a combination of this risk-free return and this stock portfolio, can you do better? It turns out yes. So if you choose, let's say this uh, stock portfolio instead of this stock portfolio, you can get a higher return for every level of risk that you can take. So let me just draw that line here. So if you do this, if you do this, then you can see very clearly that for any level of risk that you're willing to take, you get a higher return if you go with this portfolio than if you go with this portfolio. So is there a maximum value that you can, can you maximize this whole thing? Yes, so what you do is then you draw this line so that it forms a tangent to your efficient frontier. And the point where this line meets the efficient frontier is the point, is the portfolio that maximizes your return for, um, 
any given level of risk. So how do you find that out? Let me first um, put a small marker there so that we can kind of, yeah, so there it is, we can identify that. So that marker there kind of represents the point on the efficient frontier where you should buy the stocks and combine them with your uh, risk-free uh, investment to get the highest possible return. Okay, so how do we go about doing this first uh, so here's where sharp ratio comes into being let me just first compute these values here so the risk premium is nothing but the portfolio return minus the risk free rate so basically how much extra are you getting from the portfolio return over the risk free rate and the sharp ratio is the ratio of the risk premium divided by your standard deviation so basically the sharp ratio is higher if you get a higher risk premium for a given standard deviation. So it kind of trades off, it captures this trade off between risk premium and standard deviation. So you want to minimize your standard deviation, you want to maximize your risk premium, that's what maximizes your sharp ratio. And it turns out that if you just mechanically look for the highest possible sharp ratio, that is the point at which your portfolio of stocks maximizes your total return for any given level of risk. So if you want to find this point, you basically look for that combination of uh, AT&T and Best Buy stock that will result in the highest possible Sharpe ratio. So we'll proceed to try to do that using Excel Solver. So go to Data and Solver. And now what I'm going to do is set an objective. The objective is the Sharpe ratio. And I want to maximize that objective by changing the proportion of AT&T stock in my portfolio. So if I do that and click solve, then and click OK to keep the solver solution, then I get a sharp ratio of 1.6 when I have 45% AT&T and 55% Best Buy. So as opposed to having 50-50, if you have a little bit less of AT&T and a little bit more of Best Buy, then that results in a higher overall return for your portfolio than otherwise. So let me just put this back here. So that's how you basically make use of sharp ratio in order to find out the optimum combination of stocks in your portfolio that you can combine with your risk free rate to arrive at a portfolio of uh, your desired risk level while maximizing the return for that desired risk level. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.